Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're very pleased to welcome Alexander Mamyshev from the University of Washington, formerly of the Ukraine, uh, and has been in electrical engineering at UW for 13 years, a long time, and works on sensor networks and so on. One of the principal motivations of this when I first met Alex through his first book on stream was uh, why he was not using LaTeX like everybody else does in science. Uh, in computer science and, and in physics. And the reason was that you were doing multidisciplinary collaborations with other scientists who didn't want to use LaTeX. And so having to actually uh, understand what their problems were and understand how to write scientific documents collaboratively uh, in Word was one of the motivations for the, for the book. So um, I was very excited also by Murray who was, uh, has had a, a long passion for mathematical equations in Word and producing a great editor. And it, it seemed that this was one of Microsoft's lesser known uh, functions, that how functional uh, Word was. And I think it's actually something that even people in this building could find out about if they go read the book. So um, it's very pleasing to have Alex talking about creating research and scientific documents using Microsoft Word. Alex. Thank you. I have only a few slides, but I have some examples, which we will go over. Uh, the introduction was uh, indeed very accurate. We are, uh, yes, I am pleased to have my co-author here as well, um, Murray uh, Sargent, and I have a separate slide dedicated to our co-authorship activity here. Okay. I would like to start reminding and about the motivation for this work was uh, there is a great comedy office space where the, let's see, I'm going to switch my mode here so I can jump between windows. Uh, and so just uh, to remind you about him, I won't play it in this case, but uh, there is a character, P Peter Gibbons, who comes to an office and as part of his uh, <coughs> interview, he mentions that in a given week, I do only 15 minutes of real actual work. And this is how sometimes I feel. And this is why I have to think about business productivity in research environment. I'm not a Microsoft Word teacher or expert. It's just every day, uh, as a director of a research lab, I have to manage the production of manuscripts uh, by perhaps 20 people who work in my lab, 20 people who collaborate with me in interdisciplinary projects, 20 people who um, work in the companies that I help, help uh, to start or to operate. So these issues, they come in every day, every day, every day. And they come in perhaps more often than my core research, my, my sensors and, and meeting with, with uh, medical professionals. Um, and uh, it keeps amazing me how little attention is paid to the, to the issues of quality and, and productivity uh, when it comes to writing technical papers. When we submit a mid-sized significant medical proposal, it's, it's a 
for National Institute of Health, it's a $5 million document. We are asking for $5 million from the government. And every professor in the country is playing this game of asking 100,000, million, 5 million, 10 million from the government. And if you think how, suppose you want to sell $5 million worth of Ferraris. You actually have to set up a dealership, get a bunch of Ferraris, and uh, work for a long time until many buyers come through, do the presentation. And you have to sell many, many of those Ferraris to accumulate $5 million. But when uh, the same bet for the same amount is made in, uh, in the form of submitting a document, uh, very often people are, when people are quite sloppy. They, they could have uh, errors, they, they could have low quality materials go in there, and it, this um, activity becoming more and more difficult, more and more cutthroat, and so I have to keep paying attention to uh, these uh, issues. So you would think that um, in, the, I, in, in the world of physical scientists and in academia, um, many people organizationally would pay a lot of attention to, to these issues. And uh, I would like to show what uh, actually happens with Microsoft Word in these situations. Whenever an organization puts a requirement for the document, they actually don't care how much time it takes to produce it. I will play this time this, this little video, this scene from the casino movie. Details all the time. There is not one single thing I will not catch as I am over here. Look at yours. What? Look at that. Look, look at this. There's nothing. Look how many blueberries your muffin has and how many mine has. Yours is falling apart. I have nothing. What are you talking about? It's like everything else in this place. You don't do it yourself, it never gets done. Where are you going? How long can this go on? From now on, I want you to put an equal amount of blueberries in each muffin. An equal amount of blueberries in each muffin. Do you know how long that's going to take? I don't care how long it takes. Put an equal amount in each muffin. Okay. So, here's the attitude that we can observe. My own university, University of Washington. Let's see, how can I switch to this? Uh, I'm doing that. I probably have to right click in the, in the full presentation mode. So I will just copy this. It's meant to say Bing, right? <laughs> that, that's an alias. So no, for me. <laughs> All right. So this is University of Washington front page requirements for the document. Sample thesis title page and sample doctoral dissertation title page. A little hard to see there, small. Um, I'll zoom a little more. Okay, and as you can see, they are in PDF. They describe you what they want to see. Sample copyright page, also in PDF. Sample abstract, also they provide a PDF. They provide some, the, the university does not provide technical computer assistance in formatting your document. <laughs> Using LaTeX, well, there is a fellow, Jim Fox, and he provides a custom class file. There is a file that is useful in formatting the document in LaTeX, and that's it. And there is no template in Microsoft Word. Use your favorite software and figure out how to do this. Well, the University of Washington is a big business. It's not as big as Microsoft, but it's a three billion dollar business. One billion is teaching, one billion is uh, hospital activities, and about one billion is research. Of that research, Alliance Share is the medical research. And I can tell you that in medical research, 
people will not use latex. So this lion's share of this uh, PhD and master thesis produced in medical research, and of course there are many other divisions, they're going to be in Microsoft Word. And these highly paid professionals, doctors and surgeons, they supervise these activities. And as part of their activity today, they are using Microsoft Word because that's what they know. And they're using it as a typewriter. They open a page and start typing. It's, it's still the situation. Here's the example from IEEE. I'm an electrical engineer. I will take this link. The world's largest professional association for the advancement of technology. These are templates for submissions. Thousands, I guess tens of thousands of publications per year. They have templates. You can download a latex style file. You can download template and use latex. You can notice that those that work in health and medicine, they have templates in Doc. It's just a telltale sign. There is, they expect a Microsoft Word document. There is template and instructions how to create your document. And uh, I already pre-opened on my computer this template to make it a little faster, I think. So. Oh, maybe I didn't. I will, op I will open it here. Here's a template in for IEEE transactions, the staple of scientific research. here sorry no that's I knew I pre-opened it okay so right okay so this is a this is one of the IEEE templates okay transactions mm, no that's not what I needed to show Sorry. That's already our modification. Mm. Expected to work. Okay, here it is. All right, so this is the template. And it very much shows the philosophy of we don't care how long it's going to take for you to write this, to, to format this document. If you look at the equation here, it's, a, it's just text. It's a typewriter. It's a manually form formatted equation, equation number one. If you look at the figure here, it's, uh, I think it's in a text box, which already will mess up the number, and, and it's just text. I am highlighting it, and it's just text, okay? If you look at the table, table here, it's just text. So here's the document where everything is manual. All the numbering, all, all these elements are manual. And if you start creating these complex documents, you normally enter this field, you download, if you work in Word, if you are in medical sciences specifically, that you download this, 
and you start using it and you type in figure because documents are not li li written linearly uh, normally we get I get this chunk of text figure XXX figure YYY and then people manually do this and then I observe groups that that process takes so much time that uh, it comes down to this to 15 minutes of real actual work there is very very large proportion of time goes into this minutia. So I'm, my entire talk about today is not about the depths of research, more common talks that they do, but about the minutia and how much it takes and how I observe it every time. And it was like that five years ago and it was like that ten years ago. This is a publisher, Wiley, and if, if, you uh -huh. switch, if you switch it to slideshow, uh -huh. down at the bottom there, you it might just be able to click on them. I, I've considered that, but this is the last link, so it will be okay. faster for me to finish. Yeah, I, I, I agree, that, that's a fair comment, but I'm almost done doing that. Uh, okay, so um, the, here, uh, sounds very... High level, manuscript guidelines for scientific, technical, medical, and scholarly. So complex, heavy with figures, equations, complex, long documents. Okay? They have latex style files, and they are pretty good. And I'm not anti-latex. My PhD thesis was written in latex, 709 pages. The longest thesis, not the best, but... I measured the thickness, how much they would take, and I wrote the longest because I had a lot of experimental data in, in the EE department at MIT. And uh, it has Easter eggs, has all kinds of latex features. So I, my work with Word comes from understanding latex quite well. And here's a template, right? So here's a template for for the books, Microsoft Word authoring template, right? So you would expect something, okay, somebody is going to write a complex document, a book, so the publisher is going to give us a template. Let me open the template for you. That's it. <laughs> this is the template, okay? Um, I, I published a number of books, I published with a number of publishers, and although there are some little exceptions, mostly, mostly this is the situation. Uh, there are publishing documents. This book was written in Microsoft Word, but then in order to enter it in Microsoft Press process, I, I understand them. They, they were very helpful, I'm grateful for them, we, we wrote this book together, but I also observed that I give them the book, it's fully set, it's done. It looks exactly to specifications, it's done. Hit the button, PDF, it's finished. But they need to be in control, so another four months went into switching it to InDesign, and they produced a nice book in InDesign. But for many organizations, it's, it's just not necessary. Okay? Moreover, the requirement is typically from publishers, strip all the automatic features and just submit us a typewriter text and we will do it for you. Okay? Now, so this is 2014. This is the world today. It remains and I just observe how many intelligent people, how much time they spent on minutia and I have to at least solve this problem for myself. So I, I would take an existing book and I would use it and there are many books on Word. But they, everything I came across comes, has a different philosophy. Right? Very thick. Word Bible. You can look up at every feature that you want. But a typical scientist, engineer, programmer, medical researcher would not use such a book. When you talk to, now I, can, I think I can switch to presentation mode. Thank you. Uh, so when you talk to um, 
scientist, a techn technical professional, they would say, well, we are real scientists, we use latex. Sometimes it's done without a flare of arrogance, sometimes it's even uh, one of my colleagues who works, but collaborates with Microsoft and medical professionals, laughingly said, he said, I observed that when I submit my grants in latex, their likelihood of being published is higher, of being funded is higher than, than when they do it in Word. <laughs> well, in my opinion, this is because when he does it in Word, it's a lot more difficult for him. He cannot just enter a picture, cannot just manipulate a picture, cannot make them look good. He doesn't know how to use it. He's 20, he's 30 years in the field. He does not know how to do this. It, uh, we were writing a multi-million dollar grant, and there was a point there was a, still a week left for, for submission. I was not the leader of that grant, and it was done in Word. Everybody submits their pieces, groups from different universities. And a couple, about two weeks before the submission, it occurs to me that we should, should enter. There is this great graphic that would really come across. You know, pictures worth a thousand words. There is a great information. We should enter it in our document. It's important. I send it in with a little text, and the response comes back. No, there is discipline. There is two weeks left. We are in cutoff mode. We already numbered our figures. Okay, They already took their typewriter text. That was pretty recently. Gave it to the secretary who does it. And they numbered manually their figures. Okay, so we didn't get funded. Okay, and perhaps not because of that one figure. I don't think so, but because the entire system is they they could not edit. They, there is no way to improve and polish, and that's very important element of editing. Okay, because they they can't once there is number of figures. Sometimes when you work with lawyers on intellectual property, it's, you know, they, they would love to, oh, yes, add another figure. And so they send us about $5,000 bill to end one figure. And why? Well, because it has to go to, uh, uh, to, to our office, to paralegals who will enter figure 10, and everything after figure 10 becomes figure 11, 12, 13, so we spend a lot of time. Here's your $5,000 bill. Well, for lawyers, probably, they, maybe they want it this way. This is their income. But for other situations, okay, I can tell you that surgeons, heart doctors I work with, they don't want to. They are on a beeper. They, they have patients. They want to go, but they sit there. So, If you, think about, if you think about this statement that uh, real scientists don't use word, uh, that it really comes very much from how it happens. Okay? If uh, a real scientist wants to write something in LaTeX, they, first they get a book on LaTeX. There are several great books, and it sits on their desk. That, that's what typically is done. Okay? They read the book and they understand how to automate numbering, positioning, how to do all this minutia. You read it once, you spend a few hours, and then for the rest of your career, you don't spend time on it. You know how to do it. You copy it. It's second nature. Okay? They keep book as a reference, update it from time to time, and they have to do this because there is no way around it. The latex doesn't give you an option of typing all these strange looking. To most people, they're strange looking HTML HTML like commands just out of out of your head. Okay, you, you cannot do this. So you download the template and you never know how the template works, usually. Just use it. And then organizations, as I had shown, they tend to provide generic templates. If you want to write your thesis in Latex, you know, you can get it from University of Washington. There is a template. If you want but all your previous papers were written in Word because your heart surgeon who works with you is not going to take latex from you. And then, uh, so you have this real scientist now who knows that you can write well in latex, but 
But in Word, oh, Word, that's, that's, for man so that's for dumb managers. So I observe people, I work in, on military projects, and somebody who is, has a PhD in math, and of course, the math is produced in uh, uh, LaTeX and, and related packages. But then the boss comes in and says, I need it in Word. Because the boss needs to take little pieces, put it in PowerPoint, and go present it in general to generals, right? A mid manager at at Boeing, you know, somebody who did not come through the path of master's PhD. Okay, that person comes in and insists that is that, that they need it and work because they need to reuse it. The first attempt that this uh, PhD latex user sends them is sends them PDF, but PDF is not you cannot copy paste and use PDF easily. So then you have a whole lot of uh, cursing and complaining, and they are forced to spend their time, so days sometimes, taking their wonderful math and graphics and converting it to Word, and it looks horrible after they have done it. Okay. And what is commonly done with, with people who enter scientists this is how they start. They open Word, they have this nice screen, they have a ribbon now, open document, and then you have a blank, blank document to select. Or sometimes you could go to templates. You could have a birthday card there, you could mm -hmm. have maybe a resume there. You could have things that look that, in fact, you could make by yourself. All you have to do is to change fonts. Perhaps an artist put put nice fonts for you, okay? But if you go open template a book, there's nothing there as of today. Something that, that you would reuse, that you would be equivalent to a latex template for writing a complex document, okay? So you open this blank document, you start typing, you're complaining about the dumb managers who don't know how to use latex. Sometimes you use uh, online help and you just to share your frustration, okay? So the argument that I am making in my group is if you want to make, if you want to get engaged in activities of that complexity of writing a multitude of complex documents and manipulating content in these documents and not spend excessive amounts of time manipulating these documents, so you can focus on, on your um, essence, then you have to follow this style. You have to actually get the, a good template. You have to get a good book where you can look up the things that you need to do, get a reference book, and, and then operate uh, in that manner. So, we have written a book with the championship from Tony Hay, with co-authorship of uh, Murray, who uh, has uh, written by far the longest and most intense, intensive chapter of how to do math in uh, Word. Uh, the book allows to get templates, provides good templates. In my in my little world, we have templates for NSF, National Science Foundation proposal, and for National Institutes of Health, Health proposal. And the same organizations, there is thousands of NIH proposals going in, and the thousands of people, they don't provide a Word template for it, even though everybody operates in Word. So there is this piece that is, now, so there is this piece that is now done. There is a book. So thank you for Microsoft Press for, for making a book on LaTeX and for, for pricing it low, which was a pleasant surprise for me. You know, authors usually don't have control of the price, and it's uh, made it inexpensive. Okay, and the book would teach person this, teach a person this, but we are not quite. And, and it provides uh, templates. There is a website. There are several websites where templates are available, uh, but it's not quite. As you can see, organizations did not catch up with it so far. There, there, there are exceptions. I am aware of the few exceptions. There is a university in Canada, and they have a wonderful template for, for the thesis for their students. 
one out of, I reviewed 20 universities and there was one that, that had a, I could make it better, but it was decent. It was pretty decent, okay? Um, but usually, uh, this, this part, this part number five is not quite uh, done. Then uh, it provides uh, the mass, as I mentioned, and keyboard shortcuts, especially for math. It's a frequent misconception, frequent complaint from uh, the real scientists who don't eat quiche that you cannot do math in a word because you have to go and uh, use your mouse, you cannot use it by keyboard, you cannot use the wonderful backslash alpha uh, latex-like commands in order to get your, your um, symbols. And none of it is true. Um, in the last couple of, maybe even more, last few years, uh, the Microsoft team, I, I, I'm not part of it, but I'm just aware, they went through a great effort of upgrading their math facilities, and now there is a very rich, rich set of tools I was learning myself as I was reading uh, this chapter from my co-author. Uh, you can do practically everything in Word that in latex. But to convincing people that it's possible, it's, it's an entirely different matter. In my little world, when I'm a lab director, when I'm a little boss, I just tell people, you do it this way, and they do it this way. Okay, but uh, outside of it, it remains the same. Okay, so the templates are in transition. We, we, ha we have them, but we don't have them for a wide variety of documents, okay? Have a template for Microsoft Press book. If somebody is interested to write for Microsoft Press, it will be at least be easier to create the next book with Microsoft Press. Everything is automated, colors, numbers, cross reference, everything. Okay, everything you could do in InDesign, all done, and follows the style. Uh, but there are many other types of documents, and so this is the bottom. There is no really ecosystem where people create templates, and the users. They are full of misconceptions, and it's, when I try to explain, I decided, I have an analogy of, of what happens with this misconception. Some years ago, I took a, a Russian peasant who was visiting, visiting the United States, took that person to a nice steakhouse, to a restaurant, expensive, and then through his eyes, everything was wrong, okay? So we walk in, we order food, and then we have to wait. So it's not like cafeteria, you come and get food, you have to wait, what is that? We're paying all this money and we have to wait for them to prepare the food, okay? That, that, that's already nonsense, okay? We sit at the table and we talk, and meanwhile, these disorganized people, the chefs are still cooking our food. In, in his view, food cooked to order is not even... It's a, it's a long lecture to explain what it's about, okay? And, they, and then the steak, the meat, the meat was old. It's aged steak, okay? So, oh my God, the meat was, it wasn't even fresh, it's, it's old. And, and then it was a single chunk of meat. And so they didn't bother to grind it to make nice cutlass, so you have to actually take a knife and cut it. Okay, rather than <laughs> you have a ground meat, you make patties, you fry the patties, they're really tasty and easy to eat. So, and it was filet mignon, so medium rare, so in his view, it had blood in it. They, they didn't cook it. They, the chef was so bad, they didn't even cook the meat. They, it's bleeding in front of you, on, so it's horrible. Okay? And, to top all of that, we drink it with wine. And you don't drink, get drunk with wine. How much wine do you need to drink to, to get drunk? <laughs> you drink vodka. Okay? So there is this gigantic, this, he's over there. Okay? And, and, and I could spend the whole day explaining, you know, it, it's a different philosophy of life. And, and this is how I feel often when I talk to people who are very ingrained in latex. They have their beliefs. They live in their world, okay? 
And they say, you cannot do this, you cannot do this, you cannot do this, you cannot do this, you cannot do this. And in my experience, and I have to convince them because I have a system. I have the oil, well-oiled machine that, that produces this man manuscripts and word. But every time, I cannot just say easily, like, oh, no, no, that, that's OK. You can, you can put figures at the bottom of, uh, you, you can take a figure and you make, sh make it so that the text flows around the figure. You don't have to center it in the middle, OK? Because very often, you have limited number of pages. You have six pages. 10 pages. You have X number of pages to convey your thoughts in your grant. Okay? You send the proposal. The most frequent comment is the, the proposal did not address this question. Okay? Well, there is not enough space. So when you send it second time, you squeeze, squeeze as much material as possible. So every proposal has these figures squished, 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 squished. And uh, so in latex, it's just one. It's a simple command and it's squished, okay? And the text flows around. But but in Word, well, if you put it in, in text box, you could put it in text box, then you, the auto numbering doesn't work. So you have, have to actually, one optimal, very good way is to put it in a table, make a table invisible, and in that invisible table, it will be nicely handled by, by uh, the computer. Actually, it took me years to arrive at that solution. Myself, me. I, Quite an expert. It wasn't obvious. Uh, so there is this constant battle that remains that uh, uh, with all these misconceptions. So I see this. Uh, and then everybody keeps inventing the bicycle. They have their own techniques, right? Their techniques don't work. Okay, they would they would try to number an equation and they would put an equation and they make space, 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 and they would align the equation number, but it's poorly aligned. It looks it looks bad. Okay, the equation number should be nicely aligned on the right. There is we have a template for it. Works, works beautifully. You can cross-reference them. But there are seven different ways to number an equation, and six of them are bad. And randomly people hit on one of those. Lousy waste number equation. And then that's their opinion. No, no, you, you can't. It's just, OK? And so that, that remains a challenge. How do you describe a sunset to blind men? How do you explain to them? So from my own perspective, it's like you know, I, I, I take care of my group. But I think there is a potential for philosophically in in our little way and making the world a better place, okay, there is a potential of uh, resolving this still existing uh, set of problems uh, so that the doctors can focus on their medicine rather than on the minutia, okay. Um, I want to acknowledge uh, my co-author, Murray Sargent, uh, Tony Hay, uh, who uh, championed this entire process because the, uh, writing a book with Microsoft Press, you don't just make a phone call to Microsoft Press. And for recognizing this, this type of a problem. Uh, Devon Musgrave, who is a manager, um, well, he managed the process at Microsoft Press. He's Art director or something. He's a very artsy person. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think his title has word art in it. Uh, and Jim Pinkelman uh, also, uh, and, and Catherine Holiday. They both work with Tony Hay and working with us. And I, I had a lot of help from Microsoft reviewers and advisors. A lot of help from Microsoft uh, press staff when they put, started putting all their names. The phone became very small, so with apologies, thank you for, for, for all your help, but there was many people helping. Okay? These are names of the students who made particularly important uh, contributions to uh, this uh, process. Uh, so thank you. And uh, I'm open to take questions. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. It occurred to me, when, when you just open up Word these days, uh, you're 
presented with an array of possible templates. Right. And I think one of the options is uh, go to Microsoft Office Online and get more templates. Maybe we should just expose some of these templates for books and things. You know, in fact, it might even be a good idea to have on that opening page that we're displays, put the blank page first, you know, and your resume and, and a greeting card or whatever. Uh, we ought to say books or technical books is just a representative thing which would uh, go into a number of possible things and, and expose it that way. Would I think say? it would be a tremendous help. Right, uh, it's outside of my uh, control, but you know somebody at Microsoft has has, has this control. Tre tremendous help to the users. Very often, uh, very very often, person tries to write a book in Microsoft Word, and there is a lot of frustration. Uh, amusingly, some of these people, some of these uh, frustrating stories came to me from Microsoft employees, from very experienced high-level Microsoft employees, was, oh, I was trying to, I'm trying to write my book in Word, and, and you know, it's like, we will defeat it. And they keep reinventing the bicycle. The, there is a, a, care should be taken as to people need to understand what they are given so that they can use this tool properly, okay? Because they're still like that, that Russian peasant uh, uh, many people are in a very different mindset. And even if you give them the template, they might come back and complain, I tried to use it and it didn't work for me. Because it, it's a lot easier you know, to mangle a complex template for a complex document than uh, you, know, you have a postcard template. Okay? You have happy birthday and you have three fonts. Okay? So that those templates are more useful. So, but done properly, it would be tremendous help of those templates would be a lot more important than uh, I think f for uh, at least for for hard sciences users yes that does sound like a good idea the other thing is um, publishers so I've been wondering why publishers didn't use the XML version of word and I think the answer is that all the users are using old versions of word and so giving formats which actually are for the modern word is not what most people, when they have word, are using. And that, that mismatch is a problem. Why? Well, so there are two parts to that. They have two parts to this question. Why publishers do not use it? There is a variety of reasons. I think a big one is uh, there is just inertia. Okay, they have done it this way for years. There are individual people. It works. Don't break what works. And they don't care. And all the pain of putting the same equal amount of blueberries in each moment, all the pain is on the author's side, and uh, it doesn't affect their business. Okay, it's not their business advantage. Uh, but about backwards compatibility, I myself have to deal with it all the time. Okay? <coughs> So every template that I have, that, that I develop, right? Every template works with, you can go three, four versions of Microsoft Word back, it opens and it works seamlessly. I, actually, that makes templates a little bit less slick and a little bit less useful than they could be, okay? But because I know that I need to be able to send it to a whole bunch of people and, oh yes, I'm sorry, I, um, hmm. I, I wanted to show a video. This is how, there is one more piece of my presentation. It's a three minute video. When I send it to a whole bunch of people, I need to explain to them. And here's an example of, I wanted to show what these, sort of what these templates can do. I already opened that video, but here it is. No, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, Hello, I'm Aaron, and I will be demonstrating why you might want to consider properly formatting a document. And so, let's assume you have two papers. You have sample paper one and sample paper so two. Three minutes. You've written them both. You like some of the information in sample paper two that you want to draw into sample paper one. You want to put it in the end down here. Now, uh, one problem that a lot of people will run into, and I'll show it off right here. Uh, 
you might want to put this figure into your paper. But unfortunately, you'll notice that this is figure one, and this is figure one, and this number didn't update. So you would have to manually delete this. You'll have to manually delete this. You'll have to manually delete and change this. And moreover, if you reference any of these figures in your text, you have to make sure that uh, these numbers get updated too. You'll have to keep track of that and then manually update these numbers. I think that looks like a headache, and it is a headache trying to manage all of that. So I'm just going to undo and show you there's a much easier way. So, and before I begin, I would like to draw attention to the fact that these documents are not consistently formatted. You'll see that this is all caps. This heading right here is all caps with a pretty big space between. This not only isn't a Roman numeral with a period, it's just a regular one with a relatively small space, and it's blue, and it's not in all caps. The headings are different. The way that we handle uh, figures are difference bet different between the two papers. This is bold. This isn't. As well as uh, the indentation for the paragraphs. This is a pretty wide indentation. This isn't. This is Times New Roman. This is Arial. You know, this is size 10 font. This is size 11. So, right off the bat, you can see there's a lot of formatting that you have to keep track. If you want to have the entire paper consistent in formatting, you have to make sure that all of these features are not in present here, but all of this text is uh, conforming to the requirements in this document. If you properly format your document using you know, proper stream tools, that's not a big deal at all. In fact, it's not even a headache. It's nothing, really. So you uh, highlight the text that you're interested in. You want to take this section and put it at the very end. Uh, you highlight it, you copy it, and you put it into the document. And next, you'll notice that without having to make any changes to the document, the headings already conform to the headings that are up above. From, you know, little space here to uh, no Roman number, uh, Roman numerals. Uh, this isn't all caps, and this is blue now. Moreover, you'll notice that this is bold when the table, you know, it didn't used to be bold. And so, the one thing you'll notice that didn't change, yeah, even more so you'll notice uh, this is Arial 11 versus it used to be at time Roman 10. Uh, indentation also changed. The one thing that didn't change on its own is the figure numbering. This is figure 3 and it jumps back to figure 1 and in text it refers to figure 1. Although that's quite annoying, it's actually easily re uh, fixed. You select it all, press F9, and suddenly the document will auto-number them all. And figure 3 then follows figure 4. In text also updates figure 4. And you also notice headings. In text over here we referred to uh, animals, but moreover we referred to uh, this uh, subsection penguins, referred to in text right here. The numbering, updated. It's now 2.1 penguins, which is consistent with right here. So it's a lot less of a hassle. You don't have to worry about the formatting. It updates itself. It's useful to uh, learn these techniques. It'll save you time, especially if you uh, want to work with uh, considerably large documents. If you have 50 pages to surf through to find numbers that may or may not have updated, that's a hassle you really don't want to worry about. Thank you for your time. Okay, yes, that's Aaron Zelinsky. He works with me. Uh, he did that video. What I want to explain is there is no discovery. This, this of course, this is use of simple features of my, in Microsoft Word. My challenge is not, my God, look what you can do. I, I say I have, let's say, twenty students who who work in my lab. The challenge is, I am sure that almost every of those students given a task and one day can figure out how to do this. A little better, a little worse. But the challenge is that all 20 of them in one hour or less, in half an hour in fact, 
get trained to use the same template that no matter who, who creates everything, I can copy paste from single column to double column to middle size to any style I want and everything will be done the same way so that it, it's a complete compatibility across uh, my entire group. Even greater challenge if it's not an undergraduate student, but if it's a surgeon, then I have 15 minutes. I have to explain how to do it. I have to convince mm -hmm. the surgeon, and maybe the surgeon will never learn. But at least the person who works for the surgeon will get the message. Okay, get this, learn this in half an hour, and start working with it so, so that they can get our, their uh, other papers, that we are going to reuse that material, take it here, take it in our, in our new document, and, and click a couple of buttons, and we are done. We are done with formatting, we can focus on our contents. Okay, that, that's really the challenge, to get people use it, not, not to figure out specific how to use styles. Yes? Yeah, I think, I think we should probably have, uh, you know, links to these, things like this little video, uh, you know, the explanatory materials. I mean, if, if this ends up online, I guess we could even link to the right chapter. <laughs> you know, the, mm -hmm. I, I find Office Help rather meager. Mm. I don't know. Do you, do you ever go to Office Help? I, mean, I, I have not just found go, it very helpful. I usually just go figure it out myself because it's quicker. Word, word blog publishes this kind of small notes about, small posts about what, how you can do this or that. Yeah. And at least they did some time ago. Probably it was one PM. I was targeted with doing this. But they have many nice sharp posts about let's do let's try and do this and this is how we do it. Oh that's cool. We can we can extend it and get some more examples there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if PM would work is responsible for that now. Tristan Davis maybe? He's always an interesting person to talk to. There, there is individual answer to every of those. How to do this, how to do this, how there is always individual answer. It's just there is no system. If, yeah. if you talk to a surgeon or right. somebody working on it, you can show them that. If you may have shown some interest, but then they may decide, no, wait, I, will, I will do it later. I need to just type this little text because it's in my mind. Otherwise, I'll forget all this stuff. I, just, just, I have to do it fast, and I don't care about these things. Right. They're not important. Or people just, I mean, this is, they understand, but they don't have time to just do it. Like, right. Or they just don't know how to do it. You can teach them. Right? Right. From User experience type of from user experience decision designers that work on board, what they can do to help achieving this goal. For example, I, I can imagine the work for what how I work with Latia and Word. Right? Latia would probably oh, don't let me easily just change the font from Times New Roman to area of 12 points, 13 points, just because there is a button in there. There is no this easy button. I would say I would say header, I will say emphasis. Or something like that, <coughs> and then it's linked to the particular style. The, the set of, set of tools that you can use in Latia is limited. Right? You type figure, you will have it automatically enumerated. It will be text will flow around it or whatever, right? You you're provided this limited set of tools. Everything you can do everything else, but it's very hard. Right. It's very easy to learn. The first thing you see in the toolbar, or sorry, even in the board, <coughs> is change your font, not the style. Style somewhere on the right, nobody pays attention. That's right. Do you think that actually limiting the amount of things that users, options users present to people will help organizing their work? Just make... Well, just, just limiting is... is, is not limited. Kind of, I, I know where you're coming from. Uh, Word is a tremendously successful program. It's used everywhere, and, and it's, in, it's very much because there are these easy options. But for those who want to write, write complex documents, well, at, le at least the way we do it in the book here, we start with explaining what styles are, and, and if you want to work in, a, in complex documents, you, you do not go and change the font. You, do not, you go and you pick the right style for it, so that later, if this entire, these five pages travel into a different document. There is a new set of styles, and everything will be updated by itself. But it takes a certain amount of discipline. When people sign up, if people sign up, in, in my case, they do sign up for, for this type of mentality, then everything else is so much easier. Yeah. So it, it, Word gives you both options. You can do it manually, and you can do it uh, 
automatically and it's, it's both blessing and a curse. And it's more of a curse than a blessing in, in many cases, which is what we are trying to address. Yes. I, I, I agree with all the observations, comments, yeah. If they type, for example, figure one, type as a, one as a number, right. it's probably hard to catch that, right? Uh -huh. if, hundred, if one of, out of 100 figures in your paper is 59 is typed manual, manually, uh -huh. everything will update and this one will not, it's very hard for you to catch, right? So kind of sanitization or inspection, and inspection of the document probably is it be a uh, useful feature. Like what, what, what's wrong with this document? Why they don't follow your, your recommendations? Right. Would it be useful feature? Right. It would be. I, I can give uh, one example that we had to introduce along these lines, a little different what we're talking about, but sometimes the cross-reference get mangled and there is this uh, error exclamation point message, error, okay? So in my writing process, I had to explicitly, the last thing before you send the document, you do the search for error exclamation point yeah. because it shows up when everything is done, when the boss approved the document, signed in, and this is when you upload, you're ready to upload it to the website somewhere. It's, it, but that document went to some other computer, and uh, some secretarial assistant is uploading it, and she did not update the links, and there is this error thing. So the last thing you do. So this is one of the examples of, of, of sanitation. Somehow, it, it seems like it would, but in years of use, it never happened to me that some, some figure would not be auto-numbered. Yeah. Maybe because just because it, my group is disciplined and, and, yeah. and it happens. But I can see that it might, might happen to someone else. The, yeah. one, the one that's happening a lot, but it's probably outside of this at the moment, is that you write a paper and then you can you save it as PDF because you're only allowed to upload the PDF to these um, submission sites, right. and uh, it comes out two lines longer, and so uh, you're on the right, next right. page. Right, 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 and it, it, it it's a huge issue. You're allowed 15, 15 pages, and you have 15 pages and two lines. Yeah, so you know the whether it should be. Uh, in our case, the way, the way we do it, I have this other book, Stream Tools, and, and the last, sub, last thing before you submit a document, there is a checklist. And so we ch checklist for error, ch checklist if your PDF has the same uh, number uh, of lines. This, this often happens when the um, figure shifts a little bit, the table shifts a little bit unexpectedly, yes. So whether it should be an automatic feature in Word? Or no, I, th I think it's just that the PDF converter is strange. Right. I think what would be more natural, perhaps, many, many programs have this uh, set tips, you know? The next tip shows up. The next, as you work, as you work in, in the program, there is a little square tip. You could do this, okay? So this entire system would fit into 50 tips, okay? So you could learn it and, and then the tips could help you. Some automated features in the next version of Word could be like uh, email now, email packages. If you write Word attached and you press a button, it checks for you. Did you mean to attach something and it helps you? So things like that could be. Uh, these are like icing on the cake. Once there is a system, there is, there is a way, I think, to improve that system. I mean, you had some challenges finishing a book in Word with your Canadian collaborator. Mm -hmm. So his, his main uh, beef was that he, done, he never understood the underlying model, the underlying abstraction of what Word was all about. And so he didn't know what features to go for. Right. Um, he said he understood FrameMaker and he understood LaTeX but he never ever could grasp what, what the model of Word was. It, it, it would take some ecosystem, some instructors for, that, that have the right set of material for, 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 for the right set of people to, to, exp to emphasize these features, of these features, because it's hard to attach an individual person to everybody. I, because, I yeah, learned, so. learned it through, um, through the publishers. 
-hmm. So when I was writing one book a long time ago, they were very, very good, and they'd obviously worked it out like you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they gave me the, this sort of sandbox, and they said, you work within this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And initially it was pain, because I had to work within that. Mm -hmm. But it was a blessing at the end of the day. One, one of the inhibitors, I, I would suspect, for people in Microsoft Research moving from LaTeX to Word is that they have all their references in BibTeX, in LaTeX. And uh, how, how straightforward is it? I mean, as I understand from the book, the, the, the citation management actually provided with Word isn't really adequate for doing complex citations. That's right. The built-in citation management in, in Word is weak. There are strong citation packages, EndNote, Reference Manager, there is a couple more. The, I, I think EndNote is the most popular, at least that what I see in medical medical community, there are some others. They have tools. You take your entire bib tag, import it, press a button, and you have your EndNote database. And you start using it like you were using so bib tag. Use yes. But you have to buy EndNote. Yeah, you have to buy EndNote. They have separate teaching videos, how to do this, how to do this, how to do this. So it, it can be done, and I would say it's simpler to use and know that BibTech. It has a lot of this interface, what you see is what they get, a lot of advantages. When you search for the papers in the, in the library, in the databases, you want this one, this one, this one, this one, you pick, you pick, they go into your EndNote, they are, they are now available. Whenever you want to cross-reference them in, in your uh, document, you pick, 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 you never had to type them into BibTech. It's just button click, button click, and you cross-reference them. It's all described in chapter yeah. seven. No, no, right. I, 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 <laughs> I, I just wonder how easy it would be. So people do have to buy. In, I think you have to buy in yeah, you have to. Or maybe we should have a site license. <laughs> in, my, in my book on stream tools, I do the kind of the business analysis. How much do you spend? buying the software and maybe training your people to do this in this system. And what is the return on investment? How quickly you get, in, in terms of time as, time as money, how much time you're wasting on the minutia. So very often, return on investment depends on the organi organization. But return on investment is days. It's not months. It's, yeah, you have to buy it for some situation it's an issue but uh, fifty dollars it's less than an hourly salary of an employee and they spend hours and hours translating just just translating one big document from latex to word there are tools by the way also to go from latex to word german students spend time uh, writing those translators but they are kind of like google language translate you can guess what it means, but it's not literally translation. Uh, same, same here. You can take latex document and translate it into Word. It, there will be some figures, there will be some text, then you have to spend hours to reformatting it. And that's how, how you do it. Yeah, so, for I, I understand that many people will remain, and I'm not even anti-latex, many people will remain, will remain in latex, but the moment they have to step out and, you know, to start doing, doing something interdisciplinary, very often they will be in a situation they don't have a choice. And the way that they don't have a choice, they have to use work, then they have a choice. They can complain about it, suffer and complain, or the entire system. They, see, the basic system is taught in half an hour, because you open a template, I have these templates, you open a template and you said, you, you, know, you know, if you want to put a figure, an equation, a table, you take an existing figure, you copy, paste, and reuse it. Copy, paste, and reuse it. Uh, you have to master the basics before you start running freely. So, like you said, sandbox. First, we limit the people. You, you can only do this. And, and later, when, once you learn to do this, you can start exploring. So, to get somebody going takes really less than half an hour. In half an hour you can do 
everything, but if you want to do everything creatively, that's another few days of reading the book. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? I'll just say it sounds like a great idea to me. I've been here 20 years, and um, I've written lots of papers on LaTeX, and I've written two in Word. And each time I do it, I swear I'll never do it again. Right. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, I've always faulted Microsoft documentation for not being presented in terms of abstractions. It's always yeah. a list of, I want to do this, 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 or this, and it says to do these things, you do these 27 different keystrokes or clicks in a row, and they don't tell you why. Whereas opposed to saying there's this model that, you know, well, there's a program and there's a style and there's how, here's how you override one, et cetera, and you have a mental model of how it works. And every time I've gone to people and talked about it, the response is, well, you're an advanced scientist, engineer type, and that's what you want. But our users would never want that. Hmm. That's the PM response from, from Windows World is, well, what people want to do is they want to get their you know, birthday card filled out, and we have instructions for that. Mm. And I really think that <laughs> at least people with the right mindset could, could live with Word a lot better if they simply had somebody, you know, write a chapter or so that says, this is the way the world is organized, and when you want to change something, these are the right levels as which to do something. Mm -hmm. so is there anything that we could assist the office team to do? Well, the two, the two key ends that, uh, that helped in, in proofing the book Kristen Davis and, and Caitlin, um, they are really very familiar with all these tricks with styles and stuff like that. So they, and, and they, they might be quite receptive to uh, suggestions along these lines. And this is the yeah. analogy that, that uh, I found flies well. Mm -hmm. To break the rules, you must first master that. Yeah, yeah. So the, the entire system depends on just very few rules. You, you can introduce these rules literally in, I said, in under half an hour, quite a few. Sometimes I get a person going in 10 minutes and they are already happy. Okay? It's the other place that's dangerous. There are people who know every possible trick in the world, but you cannot work with these people because you have to know all of those tricks you know, and you keep reinventing the bicycle. So first, you have to be given the template and just that. You just walk within this template and you start enjoying it. And after you enjoy it, then you, well, how do I actually make it so that my figures are flowing? So how do you put, you learn everything and then how do you put two figures next to each other in words so that, like this, it's so, uh, Ten different ways, and there's only one or two that's good. Then you go to the book and look at it. So I think the best, so the templates that we have, they are actually self-explanatory. In the template of, in the text of the template, it says, they, they're in the end of this book, and they're downloadable from the website, except one, one website now, instead of .com, has to be .org. We got a squatter who stole our website. So we have to, uh, uh, but, but there are several, places where templates can be downloaded. So you just give a template and you read it and, and reuse it. Uh, we, we had to do it for IEEE, for these IEEE papers. We take the typewriter template, as I call it, from IEEE, change it to Stream Tools template that has all the features. And everybody who, who uses it, they love it. They just, they just love it. But I don't have enough stamina or charisma or perseverance to go to IEEE and say, look, this is so good. Don't add this to your website so 300,000 members can use it. Okay? Somebody who, is, who could complement with, with their ability to break into organizations would, would, would make a great service to the world. Yeah. One of my uh, co-authors in a different book is, is now the head uh, editor of Physical Review Letters. And so we could talk to him and say, hey. You know. Well, I think there is something we should do with journals to educate people. And, and, you know, having templates, it's fine having birthday cards, but having a template to write a scientific document. It's a great idea. Would be, that's something, what, what's the name of the PM? Tristan? Tristan Davis. Yeah. And Caitlin, uh, her name, name, last name is Composite. I, I, I'll send you an email. Yeah, no. It, it, it's just, she works for him, so. If you, yeah, okay, I can find it, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're very good. Money. They're but very good and they're very receptive to this. But it, it just seems that we don't make enough of all the features that you could use. 
You yeah. said they don't teach people. Yeah, the, the, the facilities are there. And so now it's just a matter of exposing it in a way. So I, I think uh, putting, putting one, one technical thing on that front page that, that shows up when you open Word. You yeah, thought it was a, a no brainer, wasn't it? Yeah, it seems that's, that should be done. You know, here's one more advanced template. Yeah. And by the way, we have lots more. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Murray was one of the con converts. When we were writing this book, you wrote it in Word. And you know, he's, he's a great expert on many aspects on Word. But I gave him a template also because we had a template. And yeah, he was producing good. immediately. Yeah. So he was, Very good. yeah. I, I do think the references then, the fact that they have to go and get a note is, is a slight disadvantage. Well, they don't have to. If they you want know, the majority, the majority, the majority of scientific papers these okay. days don't have more than 14, 15 references. You know, you can cope with that just yeah. using the ordinary system. If, if you're doing a thesis, it's a different story. Actually, the reality... For a paper, it's okay. The, the, the reality in my, world, in my world is that actually the medical researchers, they do have a note and they use references. They actually have this aspect solved. It's the positioning of the numbering, yeah. management. Yeah. Actually, they don't have that taken care of. Right. Maybe. Surprisingly. Thank you. Let's thank you. Thank you.